Well, it's only because of him. Amen? Isn't God good? Well, I know we prayed a lot, but we're going to pray again. We love to pray. We're not just a praying church. We are a church that prays. That's what we do. That's who we are. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word that is true. It is truth to us. It is life to us. It's light for our paths today, and we thank you for it. We honor it. We cherish it. And let it be your words that you speak through me, Spirit of God. Not mine, but yours. Let them be written, those words written on hearts. Let it change minds. Let light be in this place today. Let's just... Let's just pray a little bit. And then we'll see. Just pray in the spirit a little bit. We just want to follow him. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we would see today. See. Eyes to see today. So we praise you, Lord. We lift you up. We honor you, God, today. We honor you. We honor your word. We'll be hearers today. We'll be doers. We thank you for the words you're going to say today. We thank you for it. We expect you today. We bring our faith. We bring our faith to this meeting, this encounter today. And we expect you. We expect to hear. And we'll not only hear, but we'll obey. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm getting good things too as I'm studying this. Woo. And opportunities. Anybody get any opportunities this week? This morning? Uh, I had an opportunity to keep my peace. We were running behind this morning. Just everything, just one thing after another. I think I hit every red light, and I decided to stay in the joy. Because, you know, it's so easy for you to yield to the flesh and your soul. And, ah. Uh, and get upset and, and start getting stressed. But I'm like, nope, nope. I'm staying in the joy. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. We've been talking about the love of God. Anybody been growing up in that love? Yes. Yes. You know how you can tell you're a grown-up Christian. It's by all those cool posts that you post on Facebook, right? Oh, no. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no. It's by all the talk that you talk. It's by the love and showing the love of God. I don't care if you're like, I've been in the church since I was born. And I can say that. I was saved when I was five. Some people can say, well, I, I've, I've always been saved. I, I think I never was not saved. And uh, I've been in the church 40 years or 50 years or whatever it may be. They can still be a baby Christian. Do you know that? Because the Bible says, and this is a whole other sermon, and I'm not going to get into this today, today unless he leads me. But to grow up spiritually is you can tell by how you walk in love. That's how you can tell. What's your love walk like? That's how you can tell someone, I don't care how old they are, is how they walk in love. So you want to be mature and grown up spiritually? Walk in love. And we're going to talk about it today. We're going to go over a few things maybe rather quickly because I want to review because these things are so important. We want to see what the Bible says about the love of God. Not what I say, but what the Lord says, what God tells us about the love of God. Well, if you go to, um, this is familiar, we've been going over this, John 13, 34. This is a suggestion I give to you. Oh, oh wait, a commandment. A command, guys. We know this, we've been talking about it. Have you been following the love command? Anybody? Perfectly? <laughs> getting better get we're getting better i give you a new commandment that you should love one another how just as i loved you so that's how we're to love this new command we're to love like god loves us wow that's amazing we can do it though how will you recognize how will they recognize that you're a disciple or a follower of jesus or we could say a christian how how can they tell you're a believer by the love not by the, what you say, not by your quotes. Not It's by showing the love. Showing the love and walking in love with each other, guys. It starts with each other. This is talking about walking in love with believers. 
They can tell we love each other. They can tell we follow God because we love each other. They can see it. Amen? And we want people to see it, right? That'll speak more than you preaching at them. Isn't that right? Well, I love you, but I, I hate the sin you're in. That never blessed anybody. Maybe religious people, they say that. You know, makes them feel real good. Well, I love you, but I hate the sin. That never blessed anybody. Show your love. Love on people. Love each other. They'll see it. This is not a suggestion, a commandment, or we could say an order from headquarters. Remember? This is an order. Okay, it goes on to say, if this isn't enough, it goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 14, we know this, that it said that make the love of God your greatest aim. Make love your greatest aim. Make it the greatest thing that you shoot for in life. Wait, I was trying to get a big house and big car and then the best job and full bank accounts. Well, God bless all that. That's awesome. But your greatest aim, the Bible says, is the love of God. It's to show love and to walk in love. Don't you think we should probably keep talking about this a little bit? You might go, well, we've been a few weeks on this. Aren't we going to get past this love thing? No, not until we get it. <laughs> or get it enough in you where you don't have any more excuses anymore because you've been taught right. Right? Oh, let's go on to that scripture. That's good. You could be like this church that God's talking about. Let's turn to, um, let me see, First Thessalonians 4. 9 through 11. I'm going to read it in the message translation. This is so good, guys. It's so good. This should make you shout. You may think, oh, that's not a shouting message, but it should be. And we should be shouting because this will change your life, the love of God. We want to, Pastor Paul has it on our heart, and we know God is leading us to get it in us more and get it in all of you because this will bring us up higher. It will change us. We'll go to faith to faith, to glory to glory, if our love walk is in place. Amen? So it should make you shout. So 1 Thessalonians, this is a familiar text. This is so good. Regarding life together and getting along with each other, you don't need me to tell you what to do. You're God taught in these matters. They're taught by God. Just love one another. You're already good at it. Your friends all over Macedonia are the evidence. Keep it up and get better and better at it. Could you get better at it? Could we get better at it? How I many you can say, I could get better at it. I could increase in the love. So he's telling them here, you're really good. We've heard about it. We've heard about your love. You're really good. God himself has taught you this stuff. You're God taught. But you know what? You can still increase. You can still increase in the love. And we're going to talk about someone in a minute who increased in the love. And it's just amazing. It's just amazing. So one of the biggest keys, we're going to read it. On down here. The biggest keys to walk in love. You heard it. We had a cute video about the toddler up there saying, you away by yourself. Anybody remember that? Were you here? Other people that weren't here like, what is she baby talking? I don't get this. But cute little video of this little toddler. And uh, she's trying to do her own seat belt. And the dad kept telling her, you want me to get it? You want me to help you? And you know how toddlers can be your preschoolers. They're like, I do it myself. And instead of she's like, no, I got it. I got it. She's like, you worry about yourself. You drive, you drive, like do your thing. This is a key to walking in love for us as believers is mind your own business. And it even says it in the word. Is that so cool? In Thessalonians on down here, it says in 11 and 12, it says, stay calm and mind your own business. Do your own job. You've heard all of this before, but a good reminder never hurts. That's why I say you today. You're like, we're talking about love again. A good reminder never hurts. It'll help you. This is going to help us. So a big key to walk in love is mind your own business. Well, did you hear that? Nope, I don't have time. I don't have time to hear that. Nope, nope, I mind my own business. I know, but I saw them. Nope, 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 I don't want to hear it. I, mind my, I got enough to mind my own business to worry about someone else's. I don't want to hear it. Mind your own business. You worry by yourself. You take care of yourself, we could say. You take care of your stuff and your love walk, and you get your love walk straight with God, and that's enough. That's enough on your plate. You have to worry about someone else and what they're doing. Didn't we talk a little bit in metal, I'd say metal maybe, about husbands and wives? 
in Ephesians? Husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church. Who's that written to? Husbands. Wives, do you need to be in charge of any of that? No, that's not, that's not written to you. You worry by yourself. <laughs> you mind your own business. Do what you need to do. What are you supposed to do? Respect, honor your husband. Was that written to who? Wives. So husbands, do you need to say, well, she doesn't respect me. That's not your business. That's right. <laughs> worry about yourself. You take care of yours, your stuff, husbands, and leave her to do that and leave that with, that, with God. If God can't do it, don't think you can. But let me tell you, I mean, that's the truth, right? You try to manipulate and move things. Both us, husbands and wives, try to do things and make it work and try to tell them so maybe they'll do what they're supposed to do. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I tell you what does work is doing the word, being a doer of the word. Because when you're a doer of God's word, that supernatural power comes in place. The supernatural power of God will help you and help them do what they're supposed to do. But you don't worry about that. Right? And again, I'm going to say this again. I, I mean, this I should, we should make a plaque and hang it up somewhere around here because I just just this is revelation to some. You can go to seminars and they're like, marriage is 50-50. No, it's not 50-50. Hundred and a hundred. And you do your hundred and you don't worry about their hundred. You do yours and leave that to them. You don't worry about this. You, you're in charge with God with your hundred. Amen, amen. Well, I just have to drop that there because it's important. It'll help us. It helps me, amen? So how can I do this? Oh, Pastor Danny, this seems like a lot. I mean, come on. There's people every day. You don't know the work, what I do at work. You don't know what I have to deal with at home. I, this, this is really, this is a lot. Well, you already have the love of God in you. Romans 5, 5 said the love of God is shed abroad in your heart or poured out in your heart by the Holy Spirit when you became born again. So the word says you already have it. You already have it. Say, I already have it. That God, God kind of love is in you already. You just have to choose it. You have to, you have to cultivate it like a seed. You have to cultivate it. You've got to take care of it and let it come up and grow. Amen? And you've got to choose it in situations. All the time, guys, in traffic. People on TV. You know you can walk out of love with somebody on TV and get yourself in strife and division and talking and complaining and what you probably just, Lord, bless them, just shine light. They're deceived. Help them, Lord. Regarding our nation, don't complain. Don't talk about people. God says not to. You can pray for them, and you can pray for our nation. Use your energies for love instead of hate and division and complaining. Amen. That's good. I'll preach it. Preach, preach it, Pastor Dana. Oh, I think I will. It's already in you. You just have to choose it. It's like I tell the kids when I'm teaching kids in kids' ministry. There, it's like your iPads or your phones. There's an app in there. You have to touch that app to open it and access it and learn how to use it. But you could keep that app. There's apps on my phone I have never opened. You know, the ones that come with your phone, look, what the heck is this? I don't know what it is. Like, what is the, I just wish it was out of the way because I have to go through it to find the apps I do use. But there's apps on there I've never used. I don't know how to use them. Maybe they would help me, but I don't know what they are. But you have that love of God on you. Like, it's already been downloaded in you by the Holy Spirit, so you have no excuse. Say, I have no excuse. no excuse. Well, am I just supposed to be a doormat for the body of Christ and just, oh, I guess I'm just going to walk in love. Nope. Wrong attitude. Again, like I said before, you don't know what love is if you say it like that and think of it like that. You don't know what love is. Love is powerful. Love wins. It never fails. Love will get you through things you never could get on through your own self, on your own. Love is supernatural. Amen? Amen? So we put a lot of emphasis on healing, on prosperity, on peace, having joy. When that joy message, awesome. Praise God. It was awesome, Pastor Paul preached. All those things are good and right, but if you don't have your love in place, you can't get to those things. Those things won't come to you. You can't walk in those things. And it doesn't even say in the word, we just read it, that let prosperity be your greatest aim. Let healing, even peace, even joy. It doesn't say that. 
These are byproducts or things that come with the love of God. Wouldn't you want some of those things? I'll take the love and I'll just get all that stuff with it. Amen? So there needs to be an emphasis. That's why we've done it for weeks and weeks. God said there needs to be emphasis on it. Let it be your greatest aim, your greatest quest. And the Bible goes on to say, and we could say God goes on to say, one translation says, your love, walk in love like your life depended on it because it does. It does. It's a protector. Amen? Amen? Well, let's look at, we have some more scripture, lots of good scripture on the love. I didn't even get to them all, guys. There's so much. Um, let's look at 1 John three fourteen. They can pull it up on the screen. So walking in love is so important. It's vital to, the, to our life. 1 John 3, 14, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. We love each other. That's how you know you come from death to life. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? You come from death to life. How can you tell? By your love. Here it is again. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Wow. It goes on to say, whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. These are some strong words, aren't they? They're like, whoa. Man. But this is what, I didn't say it. God's saying this. This is what he's telling us. We know we've passed from death to life. You know you're not walking in death, and you're walking in life by your love. I don't know about you, but I don't want anything to do with death in my life. I don't want death on my finances. I don't want death in my relationships. I don't want death working anywhere around me in my mind. I don't want to be connected to death. So what do I need to do? I need to connect to the love. We need to connect to the love all the time. And it's in you. And God will help you. Amen? So by this we know, it comes on down to 16, because he laid down his life for us, that we also should lay down our life, lives for the brethren. But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him and does not the lo love does not abide in him, my, my little children, let us not love in word and tongue, but in deed and truth. So God so loved the world, world he's our example, that he... Shouted down from heaven, I love you. I love you guys. No. What did he do? He gave. So we are also, it says right here, we're to love as he loved and we're to give. Now, I'm not just talking about money, so don't turn me off like, oh, I'm, oh boy, oh, she's talking about money. It can be money. We have people, we had people up here yesterday cleaning, cleaning toilets cleaning floors. This is a big area. Vacuuming. What were they doing? They're giving. We've had so many people through our pastoring. It'll be eight years. Oh, this month. Eight years now, actually. <laughs> we had to count it up. Oh, wow, that many years that we've been full-time pastors. Now, the church is much longer, but um, a lot of people, I love you. I love you guys. I want to I help you. I love you. I love you. And then when you ask them, like, well, volunteer. Oh, well, my family just needs me right now. And they have like one child. I'm like, what? <laughs> Go talk to Amber and Lydia. I mean, I don't want to hear it. One kid. And like, my family just, I think they need me. I know I said I would do all of that, but it just doesn't work with my schedule. I got to work on me right now. <laughs> and you know, that might sound kind of good. Like maybe they do just need to, yeah. I used to think that. I, I did. I was like, yeah, maybe they maybe they do need some time. And I'm like, wait a second. I've seen this. I'm gonna I'm not gonna say how old I okay, I'm gonna be fifty in October. Yes, it's true. Don't I look good for fifty? I, I feel a little better because my husband's three years older, so I'm like, ah yeah, you're a fifty a long time ago. I'm just now getting fifty. But I'm gonna be fifty, so I've been around a minute been around a minute and you know I've seen people grow more when they serve at church this is not just a plug because I'm pastor because I used to be uh, just uh, not just just serve but I wasn't 
on the stage. I wasn't behind the pole, but I was serving every week and loved it. And I grew and I grew so much. And I never said, oh, I have to do this. I was like, I get to serve God. I get to serve children. I get to serve the parents. And when you have that attitude, you grow. Because I always tell people this. My pastor taught me that and I saw it. It wasn't just what she said. You know, people would come and I call it spiritual obesity. They come in every week and they're like, what's the latest revelation? And they'd sit on their blessed assurance. <laughs> Pastor Paul's not even here. He's rubbing off on me. What's going on? I'm always like, eh, what's he going to say? But, I, uh, but I'm serious. <laughs> oh, boy. Praise God. But they come in week after week and just, you know, scurry on out of here. And there's so many areas that you could put your hand to. I don't care if you just stand at the door and smile and, and, and greet. Well, I can't do much. Well, you can stand and smile and love on people, can't you? You have a voice if you can talk. You can breathe. You can do that. I mean, so many things you can put your hand to. And I see these people come in week after week. And they're ones that are more complainers or always had something going on. But then they wanted the latest revelation. Well, I got to, you know, I need to hear the word. I don't have time for that. I got to be in the service. I'm like, you don't get it. I was like, they don't get it. I mean, the father likes his kids serving. He, it's a kingdom for a reason. And in the kingdom, there's not people just sitting around with their feet kicked up. They are moving and working and moving and shaking. Because you love your father so much and you love his heart. And you know what his heart is? People. That's why we had people up here scrubbing toilets yesterday. Because they love people and they love God. And they love people. And they want to serve. And you know, I, through the years, I'm telling you, I've seen people grow spiritually more when they do that. Because it makes sense, right, as a reading, that's love. Is that not love? Love gives. It doesn't just say, oh, pastor, I love you, I want to help you. But it doesn't fit with me. Then that's your choice. Nothing you can do until they get a revelation of this. And then they're like, hey, I want, I want to serve God, so what better place to serve is my local church. Whatever you need done. Praise God. You know what? That is like sweet, sweetness to the ears of a pastor. Whatever you need, pastor, put me anywhere. I'm like, oh, hold on a moment. I just got to praise God. I might do a little dance. <laughs> because for the longest time, and we were here when it first started, we did everything. And I'm not bragging on me or whatever you were just pioneering a church and if you think about pioneer days you do everything they're making the house and making the garden they're doing all this it's like much like pioneering in the olden days you're everything i was hospitality i was children i was a cleaner i was a greeter i was whatever needed to be done because you had you know it was all hands on deck you only had a few people but you wanted this thing to grow because you knew it was of god so everybody put their hand to something and it was beautiful and it worked and it grew and you know what was great? They grew. They grew. Because let me tell you right now, I tell this to my children's ministers all the time, and I don't let them say it. I'd rather them cuss at me than say, I had to do this, and I missed in there. What was the speaker talking about? I missed it. We don't talk like that. We don't believe like that. We say, I get to minister to the kids, and you know what? I'm going to get double. Because when you minister to his precious children, his ones that are dear to his heart, don't think your father's not going to give you more. So if, if, if you have a revelation of giving, love gives, you'll be like, where, 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 can, I, where can I help? Where can I serve? Because I want to get more. I'm going to give more. I'm going to get more. It's like having a river that flows. It's not stagnant. People just come and sit and like, I'm just going to sit and receive. All I want to do is receive, 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 receive. That's not even his way. Jesus didn't come to this earth and say, just, I just want to receive from God. Hold on, i got to stay in prayer because i just got to receive from my Father. I don't have time for you. I can't cast out devils. I can't heal people. I can't go to the cross. I'm over here in this atmosphere of heaven right now, and I just don't have time. No, he gave everything. He gave it all. He's our example, guys. Amen. I did not. That was not in my notes, so that was free. So you can take it, you can. Whatever you want to do, I take it. Because it sure has helped me. I've learned that through the years, and I'll just give that to you right now so you don't have to go through what I went through. Praise God. So we go through death from, from death to life because of the love in us. Praise God. He gave his life for us. 
He just didn't shout, I love you. He gave. He showed it. So love is an action. Love is doing. Love is giving. Amen? That will speak more to someone else than you preaching at them, is giving. And be led. I'm not saying give to every single thing you see. Oh, i got to give. She said, walk in love. i got to give to everything. Be led. That's why we're, we put that with it, the Bible talks about them. We talk about being led by the Spirit of God. Be led. And God puts it on your heart, do it. Praise God. And do it even though you don't feel like it. We don't go by our feelings, do we? We have to choose the love. I don't feel like doing my dishes sometimes. They pile up and I'm like, oh, good Lord. Where are the kids? Oh, one's at work, one's at school. Oh, man. <sighs> Anybody with me? I won't even say ladies because men can do dishes too. Come on. Amen. Amen, amen ladies. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't feel like doing it, but I do it. Because it's the right thing to do. I don't need a messy kitchen, and I can't cook if I got nothing clean to use. So I don't feel like doing things. We didn't feel like probably getting out of bed today, but you did. you got to choose to do those things just like you got to choose the love. Amen? And a good thing about the love is without love, you got to have the love or your faith won't work. Many times we have those what we call faith failures. We think, was it us? Was it God? What happened? Was I not supposed to have it? And many times your love walk is not in place. You weren't walking in love because faith works by love. Amen? It says that in Galatians. Galatians 5 says it. Faith works with love. They work together. Amen? So you got to have it. You, it's an attitude. It's a choice. And we got to choose it. I love this scripture. We can pull it up. John 15, 8 in the message. This is so good. I saw this, and we're building a house, and we're so excited. Um, we've outgrew this home about 18 years ago. <laughs> we've been in it 20 years, and we said it's a two-year house, and uh, two kids later, and, uh, and a dog. We're like, uh, yeah, we've been outgrowing this house for quite some time. So we're building a house, and we're so excited. And uh, one thing about it, we, we were so excited. We, we drive out. It's a little bit further. has a little bit more like a bigger, like half-acre lot. And we didn't want to be close to each other. Like all the, just we're close to other people. And, sh you know, shoved in these subdivisions like we have been. You can hear the neighbor's alarm clock sometimes. I'm like, I don't like that. I, I grew up a country girl. And I'm like, I kind of like my quiet and I'm ready to get, I've been in the city long enough, I'm ready to get back in the country. So it's a little further out, and we just got so excited when the foundation was laid, and we, we drive out there and just look at it and walk on it. After it was dry, I'm like, oh, this is where the kitchen will be, and this is, and now that it's framed, and you can see kind of where the hallway goes. And, and so I go, and I like to walk in and I go, okay, I'll be standing here, and I'll be cooking, and, and I like to kind of imagine what it's going to be like, because we're just so excited. We've been believing God for a long time, and he has just led us, and it was the right place, right time, everything, and we're super excited and so grateful. But um, this scripture in John 15 makes me think this. It says, My Father is glorified and honored by this, when you bear much fruit. He wants you to bear fruit. Amen? He's glorified. It glorifies him. Don't you want to glorify God? Bear good fruit. And prove yourself to be my disciples. Oh, here it comes. You know. Get ready for it. I loved you the way my father has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done. Kept my father's commands and made myself at home in the love, in his love. So you got to, kind of like we're doing with this house, you kind of, we're going to have to make ourselves at home. It's going to be new, new, new new places where things are at, not like our old home we had been in in a long time. And we're going to have to put furniture in different places, maybe get rid of some, maybe get some new that will fit because we got to make ourselves at home in this new home. We have to get acquainted with it. we got to get familiar with it. My daughter said the other day, one of my daughters, they was like, did you talk about me? Oh, I just said daughter, so it's 50-50. They don't know who it was. Could be you, could be no. She, She's always just been like, the, you know, the pitter-patter of little feet when they're little. Like, she hasn't stopped. She'll run in. Mom, do this. And she'll run. And she'll run. And, and not all the time, but sometimes I'm like, she's like in her teens, and she's still running around the house, just kind of running from this room. And she said one time, she goes, I'm going to have to learn these new hallways because I don't want to run into a hallway when I'm running. <laughs> running to get this, running in, running. 
so funny but you know you get up in the night you know where the I know where the couch is and know how to go in the kitchen and get water and I don't stumble over anything but in a new house I gotta make myself at home I gotta learn everything well this is how it is with the love this makes me think of this scripture so much you gotta get acquainted with this love what is love a good word that we think it's a King James word but they use charity because they didn't know how to um translate this word love this agape means unconditional jesus came on the scene he introduced it introduced agape love unconditional love you don't have to do anything you don't have to work at it you don't have to be perfect you he just loves you anyway he loves you so much so they use the word charity, which we're like, oh, we don't use that word. But sometimes I think it's kind of good because charity is the way they, they translate it. It means to give. It's giving. So I'm like, that's, that's kind of good sometimes because in our day and age, we like to say uh, the way we talk about love can be so loosely. Like, I love pizza. I love my favorite show. And I love my new car. But that's not really love. Oh, and I love you, but you can get sick of pizza. And you're like, I want another car. I'm sick of this car. Then people get sick of their spouses. Like, I want a new one. I want to get a new one. Sick of you. Because they don't take it as love is agape love. Love is doing. It's showing. It's not just saying I love you. That's not it. That is not it. Oh, I love you, but I'm not going to do anything for you. That's not love. It's not love. So charity could be a good word because it means to give. Love gives. God gave. He showed us how to love. Amen. So you make yourself a home. So give. Prefer one another. Help one another. Give. Give of your life. Give of your efforts. Give of your love. Give of your not being uh, being able to be right all the time. <laughs> Decide, I'm just going to give that up. And I'm going to, I don't have to be right. It doesn't matter. I don't have to win the argument. I don't have to get in strife because I want to get the last word. Amen? We're going to hit on this really quick. I've told you these things for a purpose that your joy might be your joy and your joy will be fully mature or full. So this is not one, like I said before, I guess I'm going to walk in love. I guess I have to do this. No, your joy. It says right here that your joy will be full. You go from death to life. Your joy will be full. You make yourself at home in the love. Amen? Your faith works. How many want your faith to work? And every, it takes faith for anything. Anything you believe God for, it takes faith. It takes faith for prosperity, for healing. You want that to work. You want that love to be in place for your faith would work. That's so important. So important. So we love. Amen? Well, there's an example of someone who loved was John. And Pastor Paul was talking about this next week. I, man, he's getting into my message. But it's so good. John, and he didn't do this haughtily. I know he didn't because he was one of the disciples that had the revelation of, I'm the one that Jesus loves. He referred to himself as that instead of me, John. He was like, and the disciple that Jesus loved. And I don't think it was like, I'm the disciple Jesus loved. You know, I just don't think it was like that because love doesn't do that, right? It doesn't boast. It's, so he was like, I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm the disciple. I'm the follower. Oh, Jesus loved me so much. Oh, that love. Oh, that love. I'm the disciple he loved. I'm his beloved. Oh, I'm the one. He had that revelation. So much that who was there with the mom and got charged with, you take care of mama? Where were the other? Where was everybody else? Peter, where'd you go? We know what he did. James, where? John said, this is your mom. This is your son. Take care of mama for me. What a big charge Jesus gave him because he had a revelation of the love. So much that they couldn't kill him. Tried to do all these things. And what happened was, you know, you look at the theologians and read all this. You know, he, he wasn't doing anything bad to get arrested. He went into town and they saw that he was not, you know, bowing to their gods. They had all these statues of all this, these gods and goddesses or whatever. And he wasn't bowing. So they 
okay, we're going to kill you. We found something because he was kind of lived kind of out of town. And when, when you study all this and listen to all the, the historical findings and all this, he kind of lived far away and he wasn't always just in town all the time. But when he came into town, he didn't bow. They threw him in jail and we were going to kill him. Finally, we got him. We got this one. We're going to get him. Tried all these things, even tried to boil him in oil. This was crazy stuff they did back then. They just put him on this big hook, almost like this fish hook thing, and put it down in boiling oil. And when it came back up, it was like you did a chicken. Like, you know, when you do the turkeys, you know, and the, <laughs> I was thinking of that. Like, my brother would do, like, these, you know, fried turkeys at Thanksgiving. And they put him in there and it just fall off the bone. Well, he came up, nothing, nothing wrong with him. Freaked him out. Wouldn't it freak you out? If you saw this many times, like, this is one of our, our really... Uh, you know, sick, twisted things that we do to torture people as they die, and we just watch him, you know, go in there and boil like a chicken, and then we brought him back up, and there he is. Nothing wrong with him. Freaked him out. That's when he got kicked out to Patmos. Like, we don't know what to do with this guy. Just send him to Patmos. Just go send him over there. Then he preached and was like the preacher of Patmos. They didn't want him to go, and it's time to go. Had all that revelation we see in First John, First and Second, Third John, and Revelation. Wow, this was a man that had an understanding of the love of God couldn't kill him well, the rest of the disciples there's lots of ways there's accounts of how they died crucified upside down heads cut off beheaded things like that they couldn't kill john because of the love that's pretty powerful oh my gosh couldn't even kill him wow but there was a time that uh, john didn't know this as much and we see i'm just going to read it off you can pull it up on luke 9 but i'm just going to kind of tell you the story and take the time so we know Peter, James, and John were the three closest to Jesus. He had the 12 disciples, but he, were, he was the three, they were the three little top dogs with him. And they even got, just came down from the, going with him to the Mount of Transfiguration. Pretty amazing. Seeing Jesus heal people, cast devils out, all these things. The boy was healed. All of this, all this power. He's telling them that you have power to heal the sick, and it's God's power. You lay hands on them, and they're so excited. And so Jesus is heading toward Jerusalem. In the story, we, they count in Luke 9. He's heading toward Jerusalem, and he comes to Samaria, and there's a lot of racial tension there, and that's prejudice, and they wouldn't receive him, and all of this. Well, James and John were there with Jesus, and he saw that they wouldn't let him in places. They wouldn't let him come in. We're like, oh, no, you're a Jew. We're a Samaritan. There was this whole conflict there. They wouldn't let him come in, and they were so mad. They go, can we call fire down? Jesus, Jesus, can we call fire and burn them all? Let's call fire down right now. Well, he, I can just see it. It says he turned and rebuked him, and we just like, he turned and rebuked. I saw him just whirl around. Wait a second. I mean, these are our closest guys. He's trying to talk to them about power and using their authority. He's getting them ready for what's to come. They're going to have the Holy Ghost. They're going to turn the world all upside down. And here they are. Can we call fire down just like Elijah did? Can we? Let's burn them up. They won't receive you. Let's burn them all up. Burn them. Burn, baby, burn. <laughs> he whirled around and said, You know what, not what spirit you are of. I came to save, not to destroy. You're working with the wrong spirit. First time I heard that, it rocked my world. I'm like, are you kidding me? If the right-hand men of Jesus could yield to the wrong spirit, if they could yield to an evil spirit, what makes me think at any time I could or couldn't? This is something to watch. You can walk right out of here today and decide who you're going to yield to. Are you going to yield to the spirit of God or are you going to yield to Satan and his demons? I didn't say this. Jesus said it. You've got to watch what you're yielding to. What are you giving yourself over to? Or we could say it this way. What are you giving place to? What are you allowing to work through you? Is it God or is it the devil? He said, you don't know the spirit you're working with here. And if he was to call fire down like Elijah, who would burn up? James and John. That, that fire is the power of God and it will consume anything that's not of love. We saw it in the Old Testament. So they would, in, in the transaction, they would be burned up as well. They didn't realize this. They didn't know. This got so angry. You know, you got to watch it because a tricky thing is 
religious spirits. You may think you're doing the right thing. You ever, you know, I, I guess an example I could think of is like people that would be picketing uh, for um, they're against abortion. And of course, yeah, we are. We're against killing. The word says it. Thou shalt not kill. But they get so angry, they want to hurt those other people. They're going into the clinics or the doctors. And that is not the right way. And actually, they are yielding to the devil and yielding to a wrong spirit. But a religious spirit can be mean. You ever seen anybody mean in church? I've seen some of the meanest people at church. And they were religious. They can get mean because a religious spirit, we saw it right here. That's what this is. It gets so mean, it'll want to kill because you don't believe like it believes. Don't get on Facebook and all that and start answering back, well, you don't know, and let me just tell you all, unfriend you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they are wrong. It's wrong, but they're deceived. Pray for them. You don't have to be I'm like, I'll pray for you, brother, because you are deceived. No, that is not going to help anybody. They, they, that's not going to help anybody. You just pray on your own like, Lord, help them. Shine light on the shine light. They, they don't know what they're doing. But we got to walk in love. We got to get this love thing right. Because it can hurt us and it can hurt other people. Religious spirit is mean. Don't yield to it. It's sneaky. How do you think if you were the devil and you wanted to get into a church, you're going to try to be sneaky? He was with Adam and Eve. He was sneaky. Took those words, changed them. Made them look like they were gods. Same way. Nothing's changed. Nothing new under the sun. Don't yield to it. It can be It can be tricky. It can be slight. I've yielded to it. I'm like, well, bless God. They just, mm-mm. And boy, I'm glad I know. I'm glad I have some light on that. I'm just glad that I know better. That's not the love of God. Jesus would never say that. He never said that. So we got to yield. We got to give place to. We got to allow the Holy Spirit. How do we do that? This is His words. Get the love of God in you. Amen? It's an insulator, it's a protector. So I'm going to have um, Donald come up and show you this real quick. I'm going to look at my time. What time is it? I got some time? Oh, I got time. I got a little bit of time. So this will give you a good visual to, to know, hey, love of God. So we're going to pretend under this umbrella. I think Pastor Paul mentioned this, but I'm, it's good to have a visual. Anybody like a visual? I love visuals. I love it. So this is the love of God, and under this is the protection of the love of God. And so we know that love, we look at 1 Corinthians 13. If you look at it, oh, look at it in the Amplified Classic. It's the best. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Never envious or boils over with jealousy. It's not jealous. It's kind. Everybody say kind. Love is kind in the drive through One of my daughters is working at Chick-fil-A. There are people that are not kind over chicken. So we have a funny thing. We say, we were like, it's just chicken. Oh, my gosh, it's just chicken. So it's kind of a joke, you know. So we were in the drive-thru, and she was in the car with us, and we're driving through the drive-thru to get breakfast before we were going out of town to see some family. And um, <clears throat> literally, you know, you've already paid. They're so efficient. Like, they already pay. You're just waiting to go around the bend to the window, pick up the food, and usually they run it to you. It's amazing. They're amazing. Kudos to all the Chick-fil-A. Not just because my water, daughter works there. It's amazing. You know? So, um. We're in line, and, and my husband's driving, and we um, person inches up in front of us, and literally, it's like seconds. Like, you don't even have time to get it in to drive, and we're honk right behind us, and you're like, we all looked at each other like, are they for real? Like, how fast do you want to be? Like, you've already paid. The food's not here. They'll run it to you in a second. What's the deal? And so, we turn around like, was that, did they slip? Was that really real? And this old man's about to stare and at us. <laughs> what would your first reaction be? <laughs> Usually mine. Okay, I'll just tell myself. I'll just tell myself right here. Usually mine, as I go along here, remember this is our thermometer. You see what you're, our natural thermometer, if you check it, you need to be like 98.6 or whatever. 
If you check this and see, okay, love endures long as patient and kind. Okay, I'm patient. I'm waiting for my feet. I'm good. Envious. Well, and you come on down like touch, touchy, fretful, easily offended. Ooh, ow. Check it. Ooh, I'm about 102 normally. Like on something like that, like, dude, there's, uh, uh, you didn't even give me time, you know, and everybody in the car, you know, that's what you'd want it. Everybody start. what's the deal? So I stopped. I've been talking, feeding on this love stuff meditating on it studying it and so um i have a decision i can be under the you know umbrella right here and choose to walk in love or i can come out here like what in the world gosh dude what is the deal man people are so oh my gosh well whatever i tell i'm just look at him i'm just gonna look at him <laughs> it was my husband he is so much big and more intimidated they're like dad 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 because sometimes he's like and stares at people and he's and we're like, he's like, I'm going to, I'm mean mugging him. He's getting better. He's getting better. Because he's, we were like, dad, don't do that. Oh my gosh. And it's like a little old lady or something. He thinks it's going to be like some dude. He's going to be like, what are you doing? You know, but he's getting better too. He's getting better too. So here I am. I'm deciding I'm going to stay under the love of God. I know this is such a silly thing, but you know, it can get us out of joy and get us in an uproar. I was like, meh, meh. And you're like, oh, oh, it wasn't even time to go. What's your deal? What's your problem? gosh it's chicken you know so I stopped and I go what we it, we didn't even have time and I was like no I'm staying under the umbrella of the love so I had this so you know practicing this will help you you know what my first thought was to do I didn't even have to think about what's that scripture say because it's kind of like pastor Paul says wax on wax off you know if you get in this love so much it just comes out of you I go we should pay for theirs we should pay for theirs and then my daughter tells me mom we already paid Chick-fil-a is so quick they already paid back there with the car and they're already ready to pick up their food I'm like man I would have paid for their <laughs> because love would just bless somebody bless your enemies that's what that's what God says bless your enemies I wasn't my enemy but you know what I mean <laughs> at the moment it seemed like it like you honked at me how dare you and we want to be right. Well, it wasn't even time to go. And why would you even do that? And that's so rude. It's not your problem. You worry about yourself. So if you stay under the umbrella of love. You're protected. You're in the blessing. Your faith works. You have peace. You have joy. And that love just came over me and was like, I was one. I'll, let's buy their meal. And if it would have been less efficient like it used to be in the day, you used to be able to at Chick-fil-A to buy people's, I'd pay for them in the back and all that. You still do that in some places. But I would have done it. Because I was just ready to give. Like, I just want to go the extra mile. Like, not only not get offended, but just give back to them. Maybe they're just having a rough day. Maybe they're in a hurry because they're stressed out about them. So I just bless them. That's what God would do. Just bless them. Despite their bad attitude and their impatience. So keep yourself under the umbrella of his love. By not being rude, being kind, not being jealous, not being touchy, not, not being offended not being in unforgiveness because you get out away and, and those kind of things then there was your protection then you get over here and go oh lord I, I need this i need my bills paid oh lord i need this better job oh lord help my relationships oh lord help oh i need oh i'm believing i'm believing i'm quoting okay yeah yeah you know, faith comes by here hearing by the word of god okay i've been to church i heard that word oh pastor paul said this so i'm gonna say it too but you're being mean to somebody you're rude to somebody in the Chick-fil-A drive through You just yelled at your kids because you're stressed out. Your spouse kicked the dog. <laughs> Whatever. You're just mad. Here's why I tell you what. I'll do this and that, but I will not forgive that person. Well, then you chose to be over here instead of under the umbrella of his love and his protection. And you wonder why your faith didn't work. You wonder why you don't have peace and joy wasn't God's choice it was your choice you choose to stay in it or leave it I don't know about you I'm going to stay in the love of God thank you Donald and I'm staying here longer than I planned on the arms were like okay I'm gonna, my, this arm's going to be really pumped right now thank you thank you but it's your choice you have to choose the love you have to walk in love and you have to take this 1 Corinthians 13 read it in the amp C and I'm telling you, Amplified Classic, you put your name where it says love. I endure long, and I'm patient and kind. I mean, I was reading over some of this, even studying this weekend, going, ooh, can I skip that one? 
Can I go over that one? Don't skip any. Don't skip any. And God will help you. He put it here for you to, for, to be your greatest aim, your greatest quest. Like your life depend on it. You need to follow after the love because it will help you. It's not just for others. It helps you. We saw it gives you joy. You abide in God. You have peace. You have faith working for you, which is in every area. I don't know about you, but I want to choose the love. Amen? I'm going to go over the views and then we're going to get ready to close. Because this is your assignment. Go home and read this. I'm not rude or unmannerly. I don't act unbecomingly. I don't insist on my own rights or my own way. I'm not self-seeking. I'm not selfish. Love isn't selfish. You always use that thermometer. Oh, I'm, am I being selfish right now? Check it. Check it by using reading over these. It's not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of suffered wrong. You know, when you grow up in a household or even in the family of, like, touchiness, you think it's normal until you read this. Some of these things you, you read, you're like, this is normal. I had some family. We could get touchy sometimes. I had, like, my mom had all these sisters. Sometimes they wouldn't even talk forever. I'm like, why, aren't, why didn't she call in? Because, well, they made me mad or she, I made her mad. And it was just always this whole, am I right? It was always a whole thing. Touchy. You can say, well, I, I come from a touchy family, so that's just the way we are. No, nope, you have no excuse. The love of God's been poured out in your heart by the Holy Spirit. You have no excuse. And you got to break those patterns because they seem like a way of life and a way of normalcy for you, and it's not. It's not normal. You're, you're a new creation in Christ, and you're to put on the new man, Paul said. You have to put that on. Just have to put on the new man, you're putting on love. You're putting on love. So I had to learn not to be touchy. Now, uh, we used to do this. Some of us used to do this. Make the little note cards, and you put on ones that you really touchy and was one of mine. Um, easily offended. That was one of mine too. I didn't know it was wrong. I thought they made me mad and I think that they mean this and so I'm mad about it. I thought it was okay. It's not okay. So I put on a little card. You, I got where I do sticky notes, put them in my, my kitchen and put them on my sink and my bathroom on the mirror and I'd see them all the time so I could say them because you need that word working in you. The love of God working in you. Got to make it grow so you can bear good fruit. Amen? So find the ones you're not good at. I mean, like sports. Uh, I wasn't a sporty girl. I was in ballet, but if we had something coming up, like we had to try out for the Nutcracker, boy, I was in my kitchen all the time doing those little things all the time and working on my, you know, all the time, all the time, constantly. Because i get the form right. I had to get every part right. If I couldn't get my leg to go straight or right, I would practice. I would stretch and go over and over. Sports. You have to practice. You have to figure out what I can. If I can't catch those passes, man, those football boys are out. Are darn near all day right now, just out there throwing passes and catching, throwing passes and catching, throwing passes and catching. And you know the ones that are really good. Our team and Bixby are really good, and they've taken state every every year. We, you know, heard some of the things of the interviews with some of the boys, and they're like, "We're out there all summer. We're out there anytime we get a free time, and we're passing and catching, and we're passing and catching because they practice, right?" How much more, and sports are great, ballet is great, all these things are great. How much more the love of God that's supposed to be the most important thing in our life? Find what doesn't work right and pass and catch. Get out there and pass and catch. When you're in the line of the drive through when you're with your family, when your kids are getting on your main last nerve, or trying to, Amber says, yeah. Man, that's easy just to snap, but you're training them to do that. I've seen it. I've been working with kids a long time, and I've had my own kids. I've seen it where, ooh, that's, kids will show up what you do because they're imitators, right? God even says be imitators of God. Like, dear children, your children imitate you, and whatever you do, they're going to do. Believe me. And, and, and when you're teaching them, you're like, ooh, they heard that somewhere. Ooh. But I'm going to mind my own business, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. They'll say exactly and snap just like you do about something, and you have to. I've done that the wrong way. Certain things I've reacted a certain way, and I had to untrain and tell them, you know what, I did that, and that was wrong. That wasn't the love of God. So you, this is, it's okay, and let's say it this way, or let's think this way about someone. You know, let's forgive. Let's talk right. Let's let it go. I've had to retrain. It's harder to retrain. Just do it right the first time for yourself and for your kids. But you know, you you got to do this. you got to practice every day. 
And let me tell you, you're going to get opportunities when you go out in just a few minutes. Believe you me. If you don't believe me, look in the word. The devil comes to steal the word. It's not like we're looking for it or expecting it, but you just better know. This love stuff is powerful, and you got to do it. Not just hear it today. You got to leave, go out these doors, and you got to do it. You have to act, and you have to do it on your own. You have the Holy Spirit to help you. Amen. He's there to help you all along the way. When you yield and decide to be a doer, the Holy Ghost, that supernatural, that power, it comes to aid you and assist you in walking this out. I promise you, if you decide, all you got to say is say, say yes, I'm going to do it. Say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to walk in love. Amen. Amen. Well, we saw with John... Love never fails. They couldn't even kill him. Couldn't even kill someone. Tried different ways. Wouldn't work. We know it bears up under all things. It hopes. It's faithless. It believes the best of every person. And I love it. It never fails. Fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. You can say this about yourself because that love is in you and you are love because you are of God. And he's poured that out by the Holy Spirit to your spirit, your love. So you've got to act like it. And everyone will know you love God. Uh, and I, as much as that, they'll know there's a distinction. You know, in these days, there needs to be a distinction. We don't need to act like the world. We don't need to respond like the world. People that are we saw from death to life, we don't need to respond in a death way. That's spiritually dead. They don't know any better. We should know. We have no excuse. We have God's word, right? And you've heard it for four weeks. You have no excuse. <laughs> four or five weeks. How many weeks have we been doing this? You've heard it, and you've heard it, so now you're accountable. <laughs> Tag, you're it. <laughs> <laughs> but go and practice this love. Don't just hear it and go, that sounds really good. Really think about that. Let that umbrella be a picture for you. Man. If I get out of the love, I'm choosing to get out of the love, and I've just left the protection, I've left the faith, I've left the peace, the joy, I've left the love. Nothing else will work. Those fruits of the Spirit are dependent on the love. That's why it's first. Operating by the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, depends on the love. You want to be able to change people, walk into a store or maybe at your workplace or as we should be doing as believers, turning this world upside down or we, we could say right side up by the power of God. Just like James and John, they were going to have that power released to them because they didn't know how to handle it. They're going to handle it the wrong way. But that power, that love is connected to the power. How many want the power? I want all the power of God I can handle flowing to me and through me in the days we're in because I want to change. I want to affect change in where I live. I want to affect change in the earth because that's what we're here for. Isn't that right? We're not here just to receive all this good revelation and, and then not do it and not act on it. And it'll cause other people to come into it and they'll learn and they'll do it. It's called kingdom for a reason. Amen? And this is the kingdom of God operating in the love of God. It'll protect you. It'll keep you. It is powerful, guys. It is powerful. So we're going to do it, right? We're not going to go, oh, that's over. What's the next thing? Nope, you need to do it. You need to go, I hadn't got it yet. I hadn't got it like I need to do it. So I'm going to leave here and keep chewing on it. Listen to this message again. And not just because I'm preaching it. It's because God gave it. Pastor Paul and I to teach to you and he led us and, and guided us on what to say, what to say, what to do, what to present to you and now you take it and you run with it. But a good way to do that, just keep listening. So every time I used to listen um, to my pastor, she'd go, go listen again, there'll be something you hadn't heard. And, and it would every time. I'd go listen again because that was God speaking through my shepherd for me at the church he put me in. And he speaks, the head of the church speaks to the head of the church, the shepherd for the sheep. It's true. Just what they need, even naturally. 
naturally shepherds in the natural they know what to give their sheep at what time of the year they know where to take them to feed on what side of those mountaintops that this has the nutrients they need for the winter this has this they know that isn't that interesting that God would call pastors shepherds because they're giving them the nutrients the food the people need to help them grow amen this will cause us to grow up it will and I'm telling you that's a if that's an indicator like I said if there ever was one someone can tell them tell you how many years they've been you know saved or been in the ministry or whatever but if their love walk is not in place they are still spiritually young they're spiritual babies you know by the love amen they know they'll know we came from death to life because of love amen amen will you, did you get anything today we're going to do this thing, right? We're going to do it. And I'm telling you, it came out in prayer this morning that this is going to cause us as a church to come up higher and get into a different place so we can do more and affect more. Amen? Amen. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your precious, precious word. It's powerful. It's life to us. It's food for us. And we're going to take it and we're going to chew on it, and we're going to do it, and we're going to practice this so we can get better and better at it, just like you said we needed to do. Increase in the love. We thank you for it. We thank you for your presence here today. And right now, if there's, uh, I can't see everybody in here uh, because of these bright lights partially, but if there's someone here that doesn't know Jesus, we're going to pray this prayer together because you can receive him today. This is not some kind of hope so salvation. It's a no so salvation. You can know that you know. If you left here and something happened and you died, you would know where you're going, heaven or hell. And to know Jesus, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved. So we're going to pray this together because I would never want anybody to leave and not have that opportunity. So repeat this after me. Say, Father, I believe you sent your son. You gave, you gave Jesus to be the sacrifice for me, to wash away all my sins, to bring me back into relationship with you. I believe in the Lord Jesus, that he died and he rose again for me. Come into my heart, Jesus. Be my Savior and the Lord of my life. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, praise God.